Uh, good morning, folks. Uh, this short presentation I put together because of a topic called megapixels and resolution. And it's a topic that I get asked about quite a bit, and people um, out there are, are very confused by it because the information that is out there uh, tends to be confusing. It tends to be uh, not the complete information that one needs to know to make an educated decision. And so folks are always confused, partly because you know manufacturers out there are looking to make money and they're always uh, putting out information that their latest best equipment is what you need to buy. They want your money. Um, so the idea is how do you know if you have enough uh, resolution or perhaps you don't? And that is the issue behind your images not being quite good enough. Um, you know, I still remember back in uh, around 2000, um, both Nikon and Canon introduced professional cameras. Uh, the Nikon one was called the Nikon D1, uh, the Canon one v creative uh, was called the 1D. And the Nikon one was, uh, if I remember correctly, 3 megapixels. Uh, the Canon one was 4 megapixels. And they were both uh, marketed as professional high resolution cameras. Now, if you look at the latest advertising from both of those companies, as well as Sony, they will tell you that their latest cameras that resolve 50, 60 megapixels are professional cameras and are high resolution cameras. So the question here is, um, is it four that is high resolution or is it 50 that is high resolution? Uh, because uh, the same company is telling you two things, just at different time frames. So which is the reality? And I think the reality is that they were both great cameras and they're both high resolution depending on your application and depending on, on what your needs are. Now, if you want to look for a standard, one standard that is widely accepted in the industry to your judge resolution by, I would say that standard would be the printing standard. And uh, when you're doing high quality printing, sort of like National Geographic, you know, magazines like that of high quality, the resolution that is needed to print a perfect picture so that it looks perfect in print is called the 300 DPI standard, meaning 300 dots per inch. Um, meaning that when you look at an inch of image, there will be 300 distinct dots of information in that one inch. Uh, why not higher than that? Well, simple. If you go higher than that, human vision is not good enough to see it, so it really doesn't impact the quality. Now, if you take something like an 8x10, which is a pretty standard size for a good size photograph, an 8x10 means 8 inches here, 10 inches here, and if you were to put 300 dots in this axis, uh, and the 300 dots on this axis, axis, that would basically add up to, on this side, 10, 10 times 300 is 3,000. And then on this axis, it would be 24. So to produce a perfect 8 by 10 print, you would need 3,000 by 2,000, which is 6 million pixels. So again, the 300 dpi standard translates to an 8 megapixel image for a perfect 8 by 10. So if you have six megapixels, you can make this perfect and obviously anything smaller than this. Now, how about if you go a little bigger, say that you go now to 11 by 14. Well, 11 by 14, now the short end has become the 3000 and the long end, the 14 is now 4500. So now you need around 12,000 or 12, 12 million, which is 12 megapixels. Most cameras today deliver way north of that. In fact, uh, my camera is a 20 megapixel camera, the, the standard camera that I use nowadays. Uh, it's micro four thirds. Um, those sensors are a little bit uh, more square than say 35 millimeters. Uh, how the, a lot of the high resolution uh, 35 millimeter cameras deliver a 24 megapixel, so very much in the same category. Um, but basically my point to you is that if you have 20 megapixels, you're going to be able to do most of the high quality printing that is needed out there. And by the way, printing resolution is way higher than what can be seen on a display. Uh, display is quite okay uh, at 72 dots per inch. So the quality standard for something that is going to be posted on, on social media is very much lower than the standard that is needed for a print. In fact, just for your information, when you look at my pictures that I post online and that people say, oh my God, that looks wonderful, that looks so sharp. Um, most of the files, when I before I upload them to social media, uh, I downsample the file um, to 1200 dpi on the long dimension. That means that that file that is producing that wonderful picture that you're looking at online, be it on Facebook or Flickr, is actually one megapixel. It came from a much bigger file, but it has been sampled to one megapixel. Now, why wouldn't you just want to have as much resolution so that you could do whatever you want to do with the resolution? Well, there are some instances in which having excess resolution is actually detrimental to you, not from the quality standpoint. Quality is good, but here's the issue. 
uh, the bigger your megapixel count, obviously, now you end up with a bigger file. So just to give you an idea, my 20 megapixel raw file from my camera, uh, there's roughly three bits of information per pixel. So that means that the 20 megapixel is going to be around a 50, 60 meg file, which you know, is pretty easy for most, most computers today to work through perfectly. Now, if you say to me, no, I don't want the 20 megapixel camera, I'm gonna go to 50. Well, now you're having to process a 150 megapixel file. Not only do you have to process that file, so you have need a strong computer, so it means spending more money on computer, you also need to store it, and now your needs for storage are also gonna go up. You're gonna have to pay more for the computer, you're gonna have to pay for more storage. And here's the one uh, kind of secret in the industry that uh, most people don't like to talk about, uh, is that most of the lenses out there are actually designed to deliver somewhere around 25 megapixels of detail. Once you say, oh, okay, I'm gonna buy the high resolution camera because I would like to have those 50 megapixels, 60 megapixels, whatever, well, guess what? The current crop of lenses out there, most of them struggle to get to 20 or 25. Only professional glass does that today. If you wanna to go to those 50, 60 megapixel counts, now you're talking about buying the latest, very much top grade, top of the line lenses. Uh, lenses that cost, you know, two, three, four, five. Um, the sky's the limit. So by going to a higher megapixel count, not only do you need to store a bigger file, process a bigger file, but you may need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars upgrading your lenses so that in fact, your um, file will contain the real resolution. Now. Will a 60 megapixel camera deliver the 60 megapixel file if you put a cheap lens on that camera? Well, of course, you're still gonna get the 60 megapixels, but you're not gonna get the detail. The detail that you got is very much dependent also on the lens. So if the lenses today are designed to deliver 20 to 25 megapixels, it doesn't matter if your camera goes higher. You're not gonna get higher count, higher real resolution unless you upgrade the lens. Both the lens and the camera matter. So long story short, I believe that most people today will be served very well by any camera in the 10 to 12 megapixel range. Anything above that gives you the ability to crop. Now, if you can afford a very expensive camera with very high resolution and afford the very expensive lenses that deliver the resolution for those cameras, well, wonderful, good for you. And that basically gives you incredible ability to crop. I have a very good friend who's an excellent, excellent photographer and he owns a Sony A1. He has invested uh, the many thousands of dollars that it takes uh, to get the professional glass in front of that sensor. So when he goes out shooting 50 megapixels, he is getting 50 megapixels. Um, and why does he do that? Well, because he wants to have the ability to crop 50, 60, 80% of the image and still be left with a high resolution file at the end of the day. So if you can afford that, that's great. And if that is your goal, that is great. But I would tell you that for your money today, the best deal is gonna be something in the 10 to 20 megapixel range with the lenses that we have available today at the prices that, that are reasonable. I hope this is enough. And by the way, I will be putting links below down to where I gather this information. And you know, I'm not a scientist. So this information comes from other sources. So I'll put those links down below so that you can uh, verify everything that we've been talking about here. Thank you very much for uh, watching this. Have a good day.